Hello. <laughs> so my buddy Jürgen von Engel called and said, hey, can you do a, an in-depth video for the E670 Special Edition Founders Edition? Let's make the names complicated. I mean, let's just start with the name. It's a special edition, but it's not just a special edition. It's a special edition founders edition. But then they gave it, they give it, a, it's an E670 FE, and I've got the one with some tubes. And I said to Jürgen, what do you mean in-depth video? And he said, well, you know how you did like five videos or whatever for the uh, Rev Generator 120 Mark III? And I said, yeah. He said, yeah, that's the, I want that. He has a point, because this behemoth of a tube amp is so loaded with features that if I do what I do, which is explain all the features to you and then play them all and show you all the different permutations of pedals and <laughs> everything that you see here, it would turn into a two or three hour video, which literally nobody wants to see. So what we're doing is I'm running through the features in this video. Blend in a couple of sounds, really, really, really quick, very quick sounds from the forthcoming videos. And if that piques your interest and you're saying, this thing is so ridiculous, I need it. But now I want to know what it sounds like with the Strat. Now I want to know what it sounds like with the Les Paul on the Crunch channel and so on. And can it do seven strings? And what about the tube driver? Then you can watch my video on the tube driver. Then you can watch a separate video on the clean and the crunch channel, and then you can watch a separate video on the lead channels. That way, we're not generating a three hour video that nobody's gonna watch, but you are actually seeing a video on the stuff that you wanna see. And if you really wanna have your cash in hand and you wanna get this, but you still have questions, this video series on the Angle 670 Special Edition Founders Edition should answer it all. It is, of course, a something what amp. Bernd in his video tried to say that, but then couldn't because he didn't even know the watts. And I don't, I'm going to say it's, it's definitely 100. Could be more. What do I know? Now, it comes in a 6L6 version and also an EL34 version. Realistically, who cares? I know. Glenn did videos showing their tubes. Yeah, but that's Glenn. How much does it matter? Is 6L6 because we think it is a little bit rounder, fatter, and 34s are in the upper mid? I don't know. And, and if they are, you can probably dial it in differently. And then with your guitar, everything changes. And then your producer does something with EQ and it all changes anyway. Buy the 6L6 or the 34 based on your gut instinct. The end result is not going to be massively different. The one I have here is the EL34 version. I, I really don't care. So yeah, that's the EL34 version. You can also watch other videos with the 6L6, but those people had different speakers. And realistically, this, this is absolute truth. Speaker is 70% of the frequency response. Is frequency response everything? What does frequency response mean? How much low, mid, high, mid, treble there is. Speaker is a lot. Then, of course, microphones. But amp isn't that much frequency response. It's response. It's clarity. It's how it drives. All that stuff. Guitar, pickup. It all matters. The speaker, and we have a 212 angle vintage 30 loaded here, which weighs a metric fuckton. Thank you, angle. Also, this amp weighs four metric factons. So together with the cap, you're going to need about seven elephants to move that anywhere. It's ridiculous how heavy that shit is. But it's angle and it's heavy because it's heavy. You know, you want the heavy, then you got to carry, if you know what I mean. Chugger. So, 34 version. That's what we got here. We're going to start on the front panel, then move to the back panel. It's utterly ridiculous. So, this amp has five channels. That's too many channels. But maybe you want them. The great thing that it incorporates, because me and other people bitch about angle and pedals and compatibility, it has a tube driver channel, which actually is set up in the back. 
And that is an amazing pedal platform. That's what it is. So you want to play with pedals and you want the cleanest, most neutral thing to drive pedals through. All you do is you click right here. It engages the tube driver. And that doesn't even have an EQ. That takes the preamps completely out of it. And I'm going to say gives you a tube to go directly then from that tube into the power amp. When you first engage it, it sounds midi, not midi, midi, mythic, mid, 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 mid and a little bit thinner, but boy, does it play well with pedals. And once you craft the sound, is it inspiring? I'm going to show you some clips right here. So if you feel that you have to shape the tube driver, you're going to go to tube driver with EQ. And then when we look in the back, there is a whole section right here. Sorry that my hand's blue, but we got lights. So there's a level, a contour, bass, middle, and treble, and then sensitivity. I don't quite know what that all does, but you know what? We're going to explore that in the video about the tube driver, which will be the second one in the series. So. Check out some clips. So that's one of the channels. Then we're going to go into the clean channel which you engage right next to the clean volume. Now it's green. We got the clean gain and you can also gain boost it. This gain boost applies to both clean and crunch. Then we got bass, middle, treble for clean and crunch, but treble for clean and crunch is separate. So it's a semi shared EQ. Bass and middle are shared, treble isn't. I feel that middle should have been the one that you can separately, but what do I know? But for the mids, they've got switches. We got the mid shift and the bright. So the mid shift, let me tell you, I, I, I need the manual. The mid shift. <laughs> It affects a broad mid-range spectrum from 200 hertz to 2K. So I guess it just shifts everything or boosts it, whatever. So that's there. Bright does the, you know, brightness. Here is the reverb for clean and crunch or the reverb for the leads. Volume for clean and crunch. Here you pick clean, here you pick crunch, which is orange. Then we got presence A and presence B. Yes, you can actually pick two different power amp treble settings. And all the switches, by the way, all the little switches everywhere are MIDI fireable or with the angle Z9 or Z4 or one of those angle things, which of course they didn't send to me, so I can't show it to you. Boo! Yeah, two different presences that you can switch and MIDI fi as well as two different master volumes that you can switch and midify. Let's just go through the switches in the top row. Why not? Or the whole switches. We have a depth boost, which is a power amp bass add button. You want that for the me mega big, but then you don't want that for mixing, actually. The mega low punch actually adds low end before the preamp stage. So it's not a depth booth like we know from the power amp stage, but it's a preamp low boost. Then, and that's one of the things we're going to bitch about. There's a switch between FX loop one and two. And that's amazing because FX loop one and two are two FX loops. And if we look in the back, it's right there, uh, FX loop one. And that's a 
parallel effects loop. And effects loop two is also a parallel effects loop. And you can switch with MIDI between the two. In one, I've got a black hole from Eventide. In the other one, I got a galaxy from UAFX, which is killer for time-based effects. You have to be careful with having the mix not all the way up on your time-based effects. Right now on these, the mix is almost all the way up. And uh, you don't want phasing issues, which can happen depending on the latency of your pedals. So be careful with that. With the Eventide, I had a little bit of a problem. Dial back the level and turn the mix all the way up. But you cannot disengage the effects loop. There isn't an effects loop off. Couldn't find it in here. Maybe there's a trick to it. With an amp that has all these features, Engel, why can't I just turn the effects loops off with MIDI? I mean, maybe have me hold it in. Nope, doesn't do a thing. It's one or two is always on. So if I actually want the effects off, I still have to turn the effect off. That's stupid because with the abilities of this amp, with three effects loops, because there's also a serial one, which can be turned on and off, I could literally just not have a board in front of me and do a looper switcher because I could have one, two, three, whatever effects in one effects loop and then some in the other, some in the serial and actually do it all. What kind of serial is it? Count Chocula? Leslie, no? Nope. Um, but you could actually switch what effects loop you want with MIDI and therefore have a kind of semi-looper switcher happening. But no, you can't actually turn the parallel effects loops on and off. You can just switch between them. That's an oversight angle. Please change that. Uh, maybe it's a routing issue that it isn't possible, but it's it's. I think it's oversight. Now, the serial one, you turn on and off. And it makes a lot of sense to have a serial effects loop when you have a parallel effects loop because something like the tremolo that I've got here, you really want that to affect the whole signal not to be mixed in. <laughs> to the second row input amp mute lights up when standby is on i mean it's a light lead gain one lead gain two as far as i can tell the leads are the same they might not be uh we're, we're gonna find out but i'm thinking they are voiced very similarly and you can have different settings on them high gain pushes it even further for either of them you don't need two switches because remember midi yes so you can have this one without the high gain switch and this one with the high gain switch, all MIDI fireable. Again, bass and middle trebles are separate for each of the two channels. And here we got a contour and a mid edge. Now contour is gonna be lower. Let me read this to you. It's like a lower mid range bump in the 400 Hertz range. Whereas the edge, I'm thinking edge would be one or 2K, but I'm wrong about this. It's 600, so 400 or 600. That's a subtle distinction, but okay. So you can boost 400 and 600, or only 600, or only 400, or not at all. That gives you massive flexibility on that EQ, and we all know it's in the mids. So reverb for those two channels, engage for those two channels along with volumes, master, AOB. Now it gets even more complicated. Everything that I've just outlined can be in modern or classic mode. Modern will be a little bit more mid-staffed and, and big, and classic will be more mid-focused and more classic rocky sounds. I can't decide which one I like more when I'm playing leads. I think I usually end up on the, on the classic side, but you can have a generally different voicing for the whole amp, which can also be midified. 
So you could literally have this on one setting and not the other. That is ridiculous. The reverb can be engaged or disengaged. The noise gate, which you have in the back a knob for, it's buried under cables right there. Uh, by the way, there is MIDI in, MIDI through. There's the input. Uh, there's a little mouse clavier. There's a mouse piano, mouse piano for MIDI channels. And then the inputs for Angle's own foot switches. This, 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 this. Um, so the noise gate you definitely want because on high gain, this puppy does develop noise like a high gain amp does. It's not a noisy amp, but that's just what happens. And then there's a write and a copy button. Uh, I figured out write, don't know copy yet. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to have a copy button. So the way that it works is fairly simple. I'm going to send a MIDI command. You look at my foot switch, by the way, they didn't send me one. I said that, so I'm using the Soldano one. So I'm going to number three here. That sent a, a MIDI command to the app. So now I set up whatever I want. Crunch with the bright and the reverb and the noise gate. And now hold in right and you're good to go. If I now switch to channel one here, we have the first setting, show the amp. And on the third one, I can hear clickies. We go back to this. So you see all the switches are MIDI fireable. That and very simple. But let's say I want this setting and I really only want this setting with reverb. Then I do copy. I don't quite know how it works, but you just copy that and then you have that on another MIDI preset. Again, couldn't be bothered to learn how it works. It's a five channel amp with pretty ridiculous features. Oh, we, we heard these two. Let's hear a couple more things before we're done here, because I know you want to hear things. <laughs> And there you go. Now you've seen all the functions. It is a lot. It is a lot of stuff. It also has a line out. It is not a DI out, it's a line out uh, behind the power amp that you then can send into an IR loader like the ca uh, angle cap loader or the uh, UA effects uh, aux. Uh, or whatever else you want, or a uh, um, two nodes cab M, something like that. But it is not, I mean, with all the features it has, it is not loaded with a built-in IR loader. And Engel says someone who's buying an amp for like 3,500 bucks or whatever this is, because that's the price range we're talking about, they're likely to want to pick their own IR loader, and they're likely to have that thing already. That means it doesn't have a built-in load and it also doesn't have a load box or an attenuator. So you can't play this quieter. It, it doesn't have that built-in. A lot of amps nowadays do. This behemoth does not. Just to let you know, that's the one thing where they didn't take this, this size of amp. They do this on their smaller amps and they do it brilliantly. But this still needs that extra periphery to make that work. Okay, that being said, 
I'll put links below. At the end of the video, when the animals are almost over, you will find links to the next videos where we actually really dive into the channels. I'm sorry I didn't do this here, but you can already see that it's a lot of features that need to be covered and we can't do a three hour video on this. We're just going to do several videos that will add up to that. So thanks for watching and animals at the end.